Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. For this week, I thought we'd do something a little bit different and have a look behind the scenes. So I'm away from home this week. I'm in beautiful, sunny Townsville in Queensland, Australia, and I thought we'd have a look at how I make these videos at home. For this video, I'm using Bordoni number six because I often get the questions about these trombone quartet videos. So to make something like this, I, I'm going to show you how I do it. It's uh, very similar to the way a lot of other people do it, but I'm really going to speed through. So if there are things in this video that you would like more information on, then make sure you let me know down in the comments and I'll do a more in-depth video at a later date. All right, so the first thing you need for a trombone quartet is, of course, an arrangement. So I do my arrangements in MuseScore. MuseScore is a, uh, a free open source music notation software, and it's, it's really great. I love it. So we've got our four trombone parts, melody up the top, and then I arrange the other three parts into something that I'm reasonably happy with. It's never going to be perfect. There's only a certain amount of hours in the week, but... As they say, done is better than perfect. So I've got my quartet arranged, and then I'm going to export that. One, as a PDF file so that I can read it when I record it, but also as a MIDI file. And that MIDI file is the basis of my backing track. So I send that MIDI file over to a DAW, a digital audio workstation. And for this, I started off using a GarageBand, which is completely free, but now I use Logic Pro, which is kind of the professional version of GarageBand. It's really powerful software. It's a steep learning curve, but once you learn how to use it, it's, it blows your mind with the things that it can do. So right up the top here, in this little color, I've got the MIDI file. So this is just the digital information of the score. It's just uh, uh, Logic playing its inbuilt piano sound, and it's playing exactly what I've written here. And it gives me something to listen to when I record. So if I just play that, it's literally the score that I've made. And so when I'm recording, I can listen to that in the headphones and it helps keep me in time and keep me in tune. All right, so I've got that playing in my headphones and then I'm gonna come down here. These are my take folders. And here's a little secret that a lot of people don't realize. When you're making these videos, you don't have to get it right in one take. In fact, it often takes several takes. I try to limit it to three or four, but some videos, it, it might take me 10, 12 takes to get it right. And not only that, but you can use different sections from your takes. So this up here is the melody, and I did four different takes. And then I listened back and I decided that the last take I did was good up until this point, and then actually the second last take was better through this section, then back to the last take, and then it looks like maybe just for the last note, the second last take was better. So I do that for all four parts. I do several takes, and I pick the best sections from each take. And then I send that all, hang on, get rid of that. I send those best takes up here, and then I pop them together, I open up the mixer, I add a little bit of compression and uh, EQ and a bit of reverb, a little bit of mixing and mastering, and I send that audio file over to Final Cut, which is where I make the video. All right, so here, I've got this audio file down here. And here's a little secret that a lot of people don't realize. This is true for almost everybody who does these type of videos on YouTube. The audio is done way before you even think about recording the video. So this audio is recorded, mixed and mastered before I've even turned on the camera. This footage up here actually has no audio. If I turn off this audio, this video has no sound. And that's because I've, I've deleted the sound from the camera. You don't wanna to listen to the audio coming through the camera. It just, it's not the way you wanna record these things. It will never, ever sound good. It doesn't matter how good of a player you are, if you just stick on the camera and hope for the best, it's not going to work out. Work out. You need to record it properly first and then add your video on top. So I've got several different layers here. My first layer is just a black screen and that only comes in handy at the end when I say goodbye one by one so they were left with a black screen. Then I add my trombone layers on top. So I've got trombone four here, trombone three, trombone two, and trombone one. And all I do is just 
uh, trim them a little bit and resize them and put them into the boxes. And now because I've been doing this for a little while, I've got these little templates to make it a whole lot easier. So this one is just three vertical lines here that I can slide these uh, these four video files into. And if I didn't have the vertical lines, you can see it just looks a little bit messy. You've got the um, where the lighting doesn't match up. You've got a little gap here where I haven't lined it up properly. So by putting these vertical lines, it just looks a whole lot more professional. Plus you can change the thickness of the lines. You can change the color. There's a whole lot of creativity you can have there. And then my last layer on top, is the titles. And again, I've just got a template for this because to make this, I'd have to do four separate text boxes. I'd have to line them all up and then I've got a little uh, fade in of the text as well. Where's my volume going? Oh, that's right, I muted the audio down here. There we go. So uh, just save a little bit of time by having that template ready to drop in. So there we go, I've got my four videos, I've got them all lined up into my boxes, I've got my audio from Logic Pro that I've exported into there, and I've got my vertical lines and I've got my text on top. I select all of that and I save that as a compound clip so that it's just one box, which looks like this. There's my compound clip, and then I add the music on top. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see here it says screenshot, which is literally what I do for the music. I've just exported it to uh, preview as a PDF, and I go command shift four, and I do a screenshot of the line. There we go. And I do that line by line, and I just drop those into Final Cut sync them up to the audio so the page turns are in the right spot. And here I've just added a, I like a little slide transition, just to slide it from one to the other. And I also like to turn the page maybe a beat or two before you get to it, because in music you should always be looking a little bit ahead. Now, for the purposes of this video, I've actually saved the audio from these video files. So down here, these would normally go in the bin, but for the purpose of this video, I've saved them. And if I just mute the uh, the proper audio, and we have a listen to what you hear for, through the camera. As I said, that doesn't sound great. That's not what you want. If you don't record it properly, it's always gonna sound rubbish. So this, compared to, just mute these ones, so much nicer to listen to. So make sure you record your audio properly and then sync it up with your video. All right, so that's just about it. We've got our sheet music lined up. We've got all of our uh, video files lined up and these uh, audio files from the camera just go in the bin. Then I record a little outro. I throw a few memes and gifs over the top just for the lols. And then I've got my backing track where I literally just copy and paste what I've done before. And then to blank out this part that you're playing, I've just used the edge of one of these video clips. So this is just the, the side of this uh, video footage here and I've just laid that over the top so that you can't see me in this little box because that's where you go. And again, for lols, I just put a little stick figure to represent you, copy and pasted the sheet music and then the audio file is almost exactly the same except this time I go back to Logic Pro and I just mute the melody because you're playing the melody. And I export that and drop that in here and you've got a backing track. And that's how I make these little videos. So again, if you've got any questions about that, make sure you hit me up in the comments. And if you've learned something in this video, make sure you hit me a like, um, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next week for another trombone play along. All right, I'll catch you later.